Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to the walk. Uh, I probably caught you a little bit by surprise because I am so early. Um, I went to bed really early last night, so of course I woke up really early. So yesterday we started off in 2 Peter chapter 1, and the first half of it was all about confirming your calling and confirming your election, which of course you're going to be aware of if you're in that prayer closet every single day and the importance of that. Um, we talked about how faith leads to goodness, how goodness leads to knowledge, knowledge, self-control, self-control to peers, perseverance, perseverance to godliness, godliness to mutual affection, and mutual affection to love. We talked about all of that yesterday. So today we're talking about the second half of 2 Peter chapter 1, and I'm starting in verse 12, and this is what it says. It says, so I will always remind you of these things, even though you know them and are firmly established in the truth you now have. What is he reminding us of? If we look back, he's reminding us of our calling and our election. He's reminding us that we were called to be followers of Jesus Christ. We're called to serve him. We're called to use our spiritual gifts, our passions, and our talents to help fulfill that great commission. Verse 13, I think it is right to refresh your memory as long as I live in the tent of this body because I know that I will soon put it aside as our Lord Jesus Christ has made clear to me. Again, what is he saying there? He's saying that he wants to keep reminding people of the message and the gospel as long as he is still in this physical body before he passes away. He knows he's probably going to pass away soon. We want to remember that Peter wrote this. Verse 15, and I will make every effort to see that after my departure, you will always be able to remember these things. So how do we remember those things? Well, we have it in our scripture. When we read our Bibles and we go past that level of reading and we're actually studying what the word says, we're gonna remember these things. We're gonna remember the importance of our calling. We're gonna remember the importance of fulfilling that great commission. Verse 16. For we did not follow clever, cleverly devised stories that we told you about the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ in power, but we were eyewitnesses to his majesty. Don't forget, Peter wrote this. Peter was an eyewitness to Jesus' entire ministry. He was right there. Verse 17, we received honor and glory from God the Father when the voice when the voice came to him from the majestic glory saying, this is my son whom I love, with him I am well pleased. Verse 18, we ourselves heard this voice that came from heaven when we were with him on the sacred mountain. We gotta be aware, Paul was an eyewitness. This is an eyewitness giving you this account. Somebody who actually saw it happen. Verse 19, we also have the prophetic message as something completely reliable, and you will do well to pay attention to it as to a light shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in our hearts. Let's break that down because there's quite a bit there. First of all, the disciples had that prophetic message, and it was something that was completely reliable because it was handed to them right from Christ. It was given straight to them. And we are do, to do well to pay attention to it. We, that's our light in the, in the shining in the dark place. That's going to be what illuminates what God's plan is and how his entire plan of redemption comes to fruition on the day of the Lord when he comes back. And then it says, until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts, I think that's reflecting to the day of the Lord when Christ comes back. Verse 20, above all, you must understand that no prophecy of scripture came about by the prophet's own interpretation of things. We have to remember that when we're reading prophecy and we're studying prophecy, it's not to the prophet's credit. It's a miracle. It's a miracle. God gave that message to that prophet to to give to the world and that's how it ended up in scripture and if you think about it especially with some of the old testament prophets they were so vehemently persecuted and no one wanted to listen to them but yet that word was preserved 
divinely preserved so that we can have our Bible today. Nobody wanted to listen to that. Nobody thought it had any value back in that Old Testament times, especially with um, some of the ones like Haggai and, and ones like that. Nobody wanted to listen to them, but yet somehow it was divinely preserved so that we can have those words thousands and thousands of years later. Verse 21, for prophecy never had its origin in human will, but prophets, though human, spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. That Holy Spirit is in you if you're a follower of Jesus Christ. If you have put your faith and trust in him and you are doing everything you can to follow him, that Holy Spirit is inside of you and giving you that still small voice of the Holy Spirit so that you can be aware of his instruction as you go through your day. And when we go into that prayer closet, we are putting on those God goggles. We are getting fully equipped and fully prepared to go through our day and be ready to answer every calling that he gives us. Now, just to give you a foreshadow of what's coming, I believe, unless the Holy Spirit changes it, that we're gonna be staying in 2 Peter. It's only a three chapter book. I think that we're gonna be doing an entire series of being in 2 Peter. Um, so if you wanna go ahead and read ahead so that you're ready for tomorrow's message, I would strongly encourage you to do that. But as you go into your prayer closet, really focus on listening to that still small voice of the Holy Spirit. Remember, God gives you two ears to listen and one mouth to talk. Keep it in that proportion. Listen more time than the amount that you talk when you're praying. Have a wonderful day. God bless and keep walking the walk.